I know I've been on a Divorce Diaries rant for quite a while now, but I just want to take a break to just remind you about this podcast and how I record it. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast everywhere. Seriously. On Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Again, that's anchor.fm to get started or download the Anchor app. This guy is nuts. Is he really making daily recordings of his possible divorce and releasing it as a podcast? They both cheated on each other. She's making six figures and still doesn't contribute to any joint endeavors financially. Why is she still with him? Why is he still with her? I can't wait for the next episode. This helped me be a better wife. So this is how men think. I hate my husband less now. I understand my wife more now. These are some of the listener comments to the Divorce Diaries podcast. All over the map, I know. These anonymous accounts of events should resonate with anyone that has been married, is married, or is preparing for marriage and helps couples avoid pitfalls as they might prepare for marriage. Entire seasons are released on Patreon weeks before anywhere else at Divorce Diaries podcast Patreon page. Link in description. Now for today's episode. I told you guys I'm going to get into the mornings. Um, but before I do that, the, the the morning routine that we had broken down is kind of a good microcosm that captures um, the problems that we sort of had and how they're handled typically. Um, but today, here's how things went. Um, there's a brief conversation on the way to work. Um, she had to move my car this morning so she could get to hers. Something fell out of her pocket, something that was kind of important. And um, it, I found it on the seat in my car when I got in. And um, I just gave her a call to let her know, hey, you left this in the car. You want me to bring it to you? Um, if, if so, I got a couple meetings where I won't be able to bring it right away, but I can bring it if you need me to. Um, she said, no, it's, everything's okay. I should be fine today without it. And um, I said, okay, I'll see you at home. And we can talk about dinner later. So it was just small talk, nothing big. Um, but when I got off the phone, there was that sense of relief. Like, whew, it didn't go poorly. That's always tough when things, when, when, when that's how you feel. You, you kind of, you're kind of tense coming into the communication with your spouse. And then when you get out of it and there wasn't an argument, you know, feelings could change and feelings could be wow we're doing good now we're doing great and I've I guess I've just done that so many times and I'm just not willing to really do it anymore and it's it's not a great feeling when you when you're so tense and then you just come out of it like oh gosh hung up the phone phew. and it's just a constant feeling of I dodged that bullet dodged it it's like really okay you dodged the bullet that's that's not the Maybe not the best thing to do, but best way to look at it, but you dodged a bullet. And we didn't speak until later in the day when I got home. Um, the conversation was okay, but it lo- went a little sideways in the kitchen. It was just a little little sticky, but I got home and she was still cooking. She was cooking again and just kind of doing things. And, you know, it's, it's, it, it almost seems like it always gets like this. Whenever I start to... Um, care so much and start showing love and, and, and doting over her and cooking meals and bringing her stuff. Hey, you want some ice cream? I'm going to grab you some. Hey, would you like a cup of tea? Hey, would you? Hey, would you? Hey, would you? Hey, would you? That's when she just gets so lazy and takes me for granted or whatever. Or it's just me. Maybe I'm doing so much. She doesn't feel like she has to do a lot. I, I, I don't know. But um, it's like this weird balance that I've got to strike where it's like I've got to be just the right amount of asshole, I guess, to get, you know, the respect that I really want. And um, I understand that's the truth. I understand it. I just don't like that. That's the truth. Because as us guys, our moms raise us to be a certain way. Our moms raise us to be very good boys that listen, that don't cut women off, that respect women, that treat women really well and any boy that's been raised by a mom single mom whatever it's just she just wants you to be nice she wants you to be sweet 
she wants you to be everything that she wouldn't fuck. If you, you know, oh, my dad, oh, my dad, he was such an a-hole. Oh, man, he just really treated my mother like crap. And she brought him his dinner every damn night, you know. But the guy that, like, man, he he really treated my mom great. And she just couldn't see it. She just never respected him. Isn't it funny how that works? Man, but anyway, guys, I told you I would tell you. Um, I told you this journal entry will be about the morning routine. Because I touched on it in yesterday's entry of Divorce Diaries. But now I want to touch on it in this one. It was worked out and agreed upon between the two of us that I would go to work late. And let's say I would work from 10 to 6 um, and get home between 6.30 and 7, you know, depending on traffic. In that time, before I would leave the house around 9.30, 9 to 9.30, I would make myself get up really early so I could hit the gym first thing. Um, I'd come back from the gym before my youngest or my other, any of my other children would get up. And I would make sure that everyone would get on their respective buses and make it to their schools. That was my thing in the morning. So the younger the kids were, the more breakfasts I had to make, the lunches I had to prepare, um, getting kids up, showers, brushing your teeth, all that great morning routine stuff. I did that with the kids in the morning. And the the agreement was that... um. She would be at work during that time and she would work like six to two. Um, one of our kids is pretty irresponsible and lies and hides things and all that. So found it advantageous if, um, you know, she, she'd make it home between two thirty and three. And the reason she'd make it home between two thirty and three, because one of the kids would get home somewhere at about two thirty, and another kid would need to be picked up. They were really young. Um, from school at about 3, 3.30, something like that. So that was the arrangement. I was supposed to cleanly handle the morning and she was supposed to cl cleanly, I was ha handle the breakfast and dismissal in the morning and she was going to handle the ingress. Homework and dinner in the evening or at least homework and dinner get it started to a point to when I would just blow in the door at 6.30 637 either dinner is kind of made or I may have to grab it on my way maybe it's ordered but that was weird because it's like one I would get these phone calls around like 545 you know 15 minutes before I leave work what's for dinner do you know what we're doing for dinner and I'm like you're supposed to that's for you to take care of I don't call you asking what am I having for breakfast with the kids I don't you know, and in her mind, well, I'm just I'm just calling to ask and see what you would like. It's 545, whatever I would like. It's not defrosted. If you didn't take it out at 2, 230 when you got home, if you didn't walk in the door and plan the dinner and get it all structured and strategized out like I was at work because that's what I'm supposed to be doing right now. You're supposed to be at work from six to two and then handle everything from like, you know, not everything, but, you know, within reason from three to seven. And I'm supposed to handle everything from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. I know some of that time is me choosing to go to the gym and all of that. Um, and the kids are like in bed still sleeping. And, I'm, and I am kind of stealing time because I'm like sneaking away while they're sleeping. At the same time, that's my four hours in the front of the day. This is your four hours at the end of the day. I'm doing what needs to be done. You're supposed to do what needs to be done. But then over time, she got really frustrated with that. Frustrated with dinner. And let me tell you, I would come home and I'm like, sometimes the kids, oh, they didn't start their homework till about five, two hours after they'd been home. Why not? Why haven't they started their homework? Well, I mean, they came home, had snack. We watched a little bit of TV. And then we, day after day, day after day, this lack of organization hurt them and we would be having dinner somewhere about seven which unfortunately was supposed to be the time that they were trying to get ready for dinner I'm, I'm sorry get ready for baths and showers and ultimately be going to bed at about 8 30 because they're in school 
So I really only have my, I don't even have any real time with them because remember my mornings are, I guess I don't have to choose to fuss, but let's just call it what it is. If, if you're a parent and you have kids of varying ages and you've had to get them off to school, elementary, middle or high school, it's just like some, a lot of mornings it's a whirlwind because first off you're just faced with how quickly can I get them up? How much sleep did they get? How cranky will they be? Should I, do we have enough time where I need to like sort of get them out of bed in a hurry, which sucks for everybody? Or do I try to do a slow, methodical wake up thing, which, which was usually my thing. I could really do that. I could, I start with the opening of the door and then I don't do the rip the covers off the kids or anything like that. I don't do that. It's not my thing, but I would, I might move the covers and adjust it. I may come in and rub their backs. I may come in and rub their temples. So it's like I'm giving them this nice relaxing massage that's also awaking them at the same time. Or I like open their doors and I start playing music throughout the house, some classical or some music that I know they like or something. So they are waking up kind of upset that they're waking up, but they're waking up to something that they like. And it's like I'm just trying to do this thing because starting your day is one of the best things you can do right for yourself getting them up to some good music, especially if they were able to get in bed early enough. So they're sort of waking up, not with an alarm clock, wanting to snooze or not waking up like a little anxious, pissed off because they went to bed late and they're, they're not rested. And here comes dad yelling at me. So it's like, I'm trying to do everything I can each morning to avoid starting their day with yelling and getting them off and me off on a bad foot. And because you can imagine my energy level when I'm leaving the gym and I'm like peeling out, trying to make it home as fast as I can so I can get home and then come in the house. Boom, and then I'm like, I'm smelling like gym. I smell horrible because I got to take a shower. So I still have to take care of me and I got to get up these kids and make sure they're on the bus and make sure this. And, you know, my oldest, I mean, this one was in high school. I'm like, OK, you know, am I going to go home to a. Dad, can you take me to school? I'm like, uh, sure, but like, no problem. Um, but we're going to have to be really late because got to get your other one off and got to get your other one off and got to get your other one. <laughs> like, we got to get up the rest of them. And it's a domino effect. So my mornings could easily be absolutely wrecked if I don't do them right every single time. But in the PM, she comes home because there there is no deadline. Sure, she could set dinner as the deadline where it's like, holy crap, I got to go because I mean, I, I, I got to get home and I got to make sure that they're at least settled doing their homework without any help so that I can pivot and go and cook dinner. If you just you come home because you, you had a long day, you had the same eight hour day I did, but you had a long day and we both got desk jobs so you had a long desk job day and then you just loaf. You waste your time. You you don't cook dinner. You you forego your responsibility. Your responsibility was making sure that the nourishment goes into our body at the end of the day in a timely manner so that I can at least spend time and you also can spend some quality time with them because I know you, you can't spend quality time with them while they're doing homework, just like I don't really spend quality time with them while they're getting up in the mornings. But if we do that homework thing from like... You know, snack, homework and sh and maybe shower or snack and homework before dinner from like three to five thirty. There's a little bit of relaxation time. There's a little bit of chit chat, but then there's there's homework. And then I come home and it's like I just got to help do minimal things. Maybe I just have to make the plates, serve them and we can sit down as a family and eat. And I just come down and flop in the chair because I actually I've been up since, you know, four and five, four or five o'clock and now I'm plopping down at six thirty, seven o'clock so we can eat and I can hopefully have my conversations with the kids then that how is everybody's day all this before they go up to take showers and hopefully that could be done by seven thirty, seven forty five, and then maybe we all can really sit together after we all have had exhausting days a little bit bloody a little bruised but then what does she do in addition to not planning the evenings? Well, I overslept. I'm going to go in later. I'll go in around eight. So I'll be home at five. 
So the kid's going to come home by themselves. Well, I mean, it's okay because, you know, such and such gets out at this time and such and such get out. But just last week, this one missed the bus and they weren't here for that one. What if this one misses the bus too? And then the littlest one won't get picked up and the littlest one won't. What will what, happen then? Well, I mean, I guess I'll just come home. But no, but the plan was for you to get out of my face. I'm, I'm tired. If I have to oversleep, I mean, I can't just keep going like this. And I'm like, okay, that's why I want to get a divorce. Because it became so consistent. You aren't making dinner, but you're calling me about dinner in a time that it is your responsibility. I don't call you for my responsibilities. But that became sort of an everyday thing. And then the oversleeping. Because you're like, oh, I want to stay up and I want to watch a movie. I've had a long day. So instead of going to bed at maybe 9, so you can get 9 o'clock, what, 10 o'clock, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4 a.m., 5 a.m. is when you can wake up. So you can get to work by 6. That's 8 hours of sleep. But instead, eh, you want to stay up till 11. Like playing games on your phone, surfing the web, playing games on the iPad, get in bed around 11. Oh, that's two hours lost. So instead of waking up at 5, you're waking up at 7, so you can get to work at 8. Get to work at 8, you leave at 5. You're home at 5.30. Kids been home two, two and a half hours. They haven't been focused that whole time because they haven't had a parent there. So now homework's starting to get done at 5.30 or you... Oh, I'll just pick up dinner because I'm so late coming home and dinner's my responsibility. So what, you went to Chick-fil-A and you spent $50 on dinner? We can't keep doing that. We just went to the supermarket and we we spent 200 bucks on food for like, you know, a couple of weeks. But you're going to spend $50 at Chick-fil-A for a day's worth of dinner for our family? Well, it's just one night. It's, well, it's not just one night because you did it yesterday. I didn't I didn't go to Chick-fil-A yesterday. No, you didn't, but you spent thirty dollars at Wendy's. So now our kids are having fast food back to back days because you wanted to sleep more. Oh my god, are you blaming me? Uh, I'm reminding you of what you said you would do, and what you said you would do was be home to take care of their homework and their dinner. And then I say something crazy like, Why don't be their mother? And now, obviously, you can see how that would powder keg. You see how that pot would boil over pretty quickly. How angry she would get. I am their mother. I'll take care. Now, I made her so mad that, well, I'll eat more Nutella because you're hurting my feelings. I wouldn't have anything to say if you did this. The only reason I'm saying this to you is because we're on day number five of this. Our kids are eating fast food. I'm stressed out coming home from work. It's hurting us. Can you please just do what you said? Okay, would you like to switch? Would you like to cover the mornings and I cover the evenings? Because I will stick to what I say. I can't go to work that late. You get to work at 10 o'clock. I can't get to work that late. I know that's why the agreement was you go in early. And you like getting up early. I hate getting up early, but you like getting up early. It's quiet. You don't have anything to worry about in the morning part at the beginning of the day. You'll only have the afternoon to worry about. Well, I don't know. Well, I can't promise that it'll always happen. That that's what an agreement is. An agreement's not necessarily a promise, but it may as well be. You agreed to do this and now you aren't. So now when you call me at 545 to ask me about dinner, Actually, there's a chance that you might not even be home yet. And our kids have been by themselves. And now I'm stressing about their homework because it might trickle down into their grades. And it'll definitely trickle down into their weight and their health because they're eating fast food way more than I want. It'll definitely trickle into the bank account because you're spending 50 bucks at Chick-fil-A or 30 bucks at Wendy's or whatever when we eat on the cheap. And I'm spending all the money on the groceries. It's just so that's that much less I can save for our vacate. You see the, the, the givers in the relationship, any 
anybody that's reading, really listening to this Divorce Diaries podcast, you know what I mean. When you follow the money, you follow the time, you follow the trail of whatever tangible or intangible resource you have. When one thing happens, it's a snowball effect. So you not holding up your end of the deal is definitely making our marriage harder because I'm stressed and I'm doing what I told you guys and my other divorce diaries entry. If both of us are giving 100% and both of us have skin in the game, even if both of us are giving 70, let's just say that's 140% going in. I like joking around about that. If both people are giving 100%, you know, you know, one person can't give anything. You go down from 200% down to 100%. So you're always giving 100%. But if even if it's 70, 70, because we just, we just can't give 100 most days. We just can't. But we can give you 70% of who we are. Then we're at 140%. 70 plus 70, 140. So that date is you can only give 50. Hell, you can only give 30%. That's you. I couldn't do dinner tonight, but I just came home. I vegged out. I ordered pizza. I ordered pizza. So I took care of dinner. And, you know, sorry. But, you know, I got the kids. You know, they're scheduled right. And I, and I came home a little later than expected. They knocked out their homework. And I got them in the shower now. And I told I told the littlest one, I, I couldn't, I can't watch movies with you. You know, you, you got to take a shower. So go. And it's like, I just come home, like, and all I hear is that story. Or maybe I got the text waiting for me when I hit the phone. And I know that this is what you did. And this is what you were thinking. And this is why you did it. And you communicated it with me. So I come home and I'm like, hey, cool. Thanks for taking care of pizza. And thanks for taking care of the kids instead of what it was. And what it was was I'm always surprised. Oh, I didn't know that you left. So wait, because I get to the gym at, let's say, 6 a.m. And maybe I don't get back home until 8.05. I thought you were gone at 5.45 when I left. But you weren't. You just kind of went back to bed. And you stayed in bed till about 7.45. And you got up and you ran out, like, right before I got back home. So I had no way of knowing that you just left. Then you didn't tell me anything. And now it's just this big surprise. What's for dinner at 545 to me? That's just showing me you don't care. You didn't want to think about it. You didn't want to stay structured and organized. You didn't want to pull the weight that you told me you would pull. Speaking of that, I think I'll tell you guys about the uh, my next entry will probably be about the business venture that I decided to go in with her after she cheated. That was stupid. And I don't think any of this stuff is her fault. It's just me being a young, dumb man doing dumb things. Wow. That was the Divorce Diaries podcast. The Daily Saga will continue tomorrow. The full season's episodes are on Patreon now. Subscribe for early access. Click the Patreon link in the description. Hopefully, these entries help our anonymous recorder as a form of his own personal therapy. That's his hope and his intention. Will these recordings of life's curveballs lead this family to the best resolution in the end? We'll keep listening. New episodes are released daily on all podcast players, but all episodes are available on Patreon at Divorce Diaries Podcast Patreon page. Until next time.